Team Earth, welcome to part two of the first gigawatt down. The one concept everyone needs to understand to beat the climate crisis and win the race to zero carbon. First, a disclaimer. This video has a lot of math and numbers in it, which are estimates and back of the envelope calculations. One day, we're going to have the best, most validated numbers standardized, part of the ultimate zero carbon scoreboard. Till then, just roll with it. And now, what is a first gigawatt down? A gigawatt is a unit of measure, and a first down is a football term. In football, you run a ball down a field. In the race to zero carbon, your whole state runs its greenhouse gas emissions to zero. In football, the field is 100 yards long. In the race to zero carbon, the field is measured in gigawatt equivalents, and varies by state. Like Rhode Island is 2 to 3 gigawatts, New York 40 to 50. In football, the line of scrimmage is where the ball is spotted before a play is run. In the race to zero carbon, the line of scrimmage is how decarbonized your energy supply is. For example, New Jersey is 20% decarbonized with 80% of the field in fossils. So it's like we're at the 20 yard line, but since we measure the field in gigawatts, it's the four gigawatt line of a 20 gigawatt field. In football, your team gets four chances to move a ball 10 yards. If you succeed, that's a first down and you get to try again for another first down. If you fail, you lose possession. In the race to zero carbon, our first down is a minimum gain of a gigawatt equivalent of energy. What's a gigawatt equivalent? Basically, it's the amount of energy you would get from running a one gigawatt power plant nonstop all year. Of course, power plants come in different sizes and no power plant runs nonstop all year. To put the size in perspective, there's kilowatts, megawatts, and gigawatts. Kilowatts would be like the solar panels on your home. You know, like a five kilowatt installation. A megawatt is a thousand kilowatts. So that's more like your wind turbines and solar farms. Those come in the megawatt range. And a gigawatt is a million kilowatts. So that would be more like a nuclear reactor. Uh, those come in the gigawatt range. And as for no power plant running nonstop all year, there's two things you need to know about any given power plant to figure out if you can get a first gigawatt down. You need the power of the plant, called the nameplate capacity, and how much of the time you can actually generate power with it. That's the capacity factor. For example, say you have a nuclear reactor that's a 1.2 gigawatt nameplate capacity, and it runs 90% of the time. That's a 90% capacity factor. Okay, great. That really looks good on paper. That is about a gigawatt. Now what you need to do is figure out if you can actually get it up and running to get the gigawatt down. Because you know you have to, you can't just do math. You actually have to make it happen. Or say you want to put up an onshore wind farm with those new GE 5.3 megawatt wind turbines. They have a 43% capacity factor. So how many wind turbines would you need for a first gigawatt down? Well, let's do the math. Each turbine is 43% of 5.3 megawatts, so that's 2.3 megawatts per turbine per year. Now a gigawatt is 1,000 megawatts, so we divide 1,000 by 2.3, and that gives us 435. So we need 435 of those wind turbines for that first gigawatt down. Keep in mind, wind turbines come in different sizes. Those 5.3 megawatt GE turbines are new, so they're not in widespread use yet. If you want to see them now, you're going to have to go to a demo farm in the Netherlands. Most onshore wind turbines that you're familiar with, like the ones in Pennsylvania, are 1.5 to 2 megawatts each, nameplate capacity. Turbine size makes a big difference in our calculations, not just because the nameplate capacity is different, but also the capacity factor. Taller turbines get steadier wind and a better capacity factor. Shorter turbines get like a 20-30% capacity factor. So, if you want to stick with 2 megawatt wind turbines, with that 30% capacity factor, that's 0.6 megawatt equivalent each. So you would need 1,700 of those turbines for your first gigawatt down. Whatever turbine configuration you come up with on paper, just remember you need to get actual power plants on the actual ground to win. And that ground is in your state, your county, your backyard. You're putting real physical objects into a real physical space with an intense approval process. More gigawatt examples to come, but first, more football metaphors. 
In football, you're playing for the joy of the game, the rush. Uh, maybe a trophy, bragging rights, money. In the race to zero carbon, there's all that, plus some really high stakes. The stakes of this game are the peace and prosperity of humankind, the ecological vitality of our planet, and our classification as an intelligent species worthy of a planet. In football, the game is 60 minutes plus timeouts. If the score is tied at the end, the game goes into overtime. In the race to zero carbon, we're in overtime. Sudden death overtime. We've used up all our timeouts. We have one shot to completely decarbonize the whole economy. And that's a minimum. We're also going to need geoengineering and other fun things. In football, you've got one specialized team on the field at a time making their plays. You know, the offense, the defense, the field goal kicking team. In the race to zero carbon, we've got all the specialized teams simultaneously on the field, on the field at the field same pushing time, for a first gigawatt executing down. their play. Team solar rooftop, team solar farm, team onshore wind, offshore wind, nuclear efficiency, etc. All these teams, you need to go as fast as you can, as far as you can, get your first gigawatt down. So what's it going to take? Let's look at some real world examples, get a real sense of a gigawatt down, what the ground game is like, and how far you can go with any given offense. Let's start with a fan favorite, Team Solar Rooftop. How many residential rooftop installations do we need for a first gigawatt down? Say the average installation is 5 kilowatts. That's 5 kilowatt nameplate capacity. Residential solar has a 15% capacity factor. 15% of 5 is 0.75. That's 0.75 kilowatt equivalent. A gigawatt has a million kilowatts. Divided by 0.75, you'll need 1.3 million homes with solar rooftop panels to get your first gigawatt down. The limitation for this play is the amount of homes suitable for solar. Once you max out the rooftops, that's as far as you can go with residential solar rooftop in your state. FYI, some folks out at Stanford estimate maximum residential solar rooftop for New Jersey is 1.2 gigawatt equivalent. Add in commercial, and that bumps you up to 2 gigawatt equivalent. Go all the way and you can move that line of scrimmage two gigawatt down. Hand off to Solar Farms. All right, now let's hand off to Team Solar Farm. The Solar Farm play is going to get a lot more intense. This is where you're going to see the approval process really uh, coming to its full. And a great example of this is, of course, Six Flags in New Jersey. One day, Six Flags Amusement Park decided to go solar. Everyone cheered. They said, we're going to put solar power on our property. Everyone cheered. They said, we're going to take the 90 acres of our property adjacent to that wildlife preserve and cut down 15,000 trees and put up solar panels. And everybody said, wait, what? Three years of legal battles later, they reached a settlement to only cut down 40 acres of trees. This is the biggest solar farm in New Jersey so far. Years in the making. The question is, was it a first gigawatt down? Okay, obviously it's not going to be a first gigawatt down. A better question is how many of these Six Flags scale projects and lawsuits and whatnot will it take to get a first gigawatt down? So let's do the math. This was for a 23.5 megawatt solar farm. That's 23.5 megawatt nameplate capacity. And the capacity factor for solar farm in the Northeast is 17%. So multiply 23.5 by 17%, that gives you 4 megawatts. Megawatts! And of course, you're going to need 250 of those to get 1 gigawatt. So basically, you need 250 Six Flags shenanigans for a gigawatt down. Keep in mind, the resistance was not coming from climate deniers. It was coming from people who like trees. Uh, people have mixed feelings about a lot of these plays. That is a reality. All right, Team Solar, here's your challenge. For a first gigawatt down, you need 250 Six Flag scale projects. Step one is identifying the land. It's time to pull out the maps of your city, county, and state and figure out how much land is available and suitable for solar. How many gigawatts can you get, in theory? Of course, theory is useless if you can't get the panels on the ground. The next step is to figure out the best spots where you'll face the least NIMBY. Get it approved, get your solar on the ground, and you'll have your first gigawatt down. And once you get that first gigawatt down, what's next? New Jersey is about a 20 gigawatt state. So how many of those gigawatts can you get with solar? 
And at what point will you lose possession or hand off the ball? All right, let's hand off to Wind. How is Team Wind doing in New Jersey? Check it out. Orsted just got picked to build New Jersey's first offshore wind farm. They've been approved for 1,100 megawatts, which is 1.1 gigawatt nameplate capacity. If they use those wind turbines they use in Rhode Island, that's a 47.5% capacity factor. So this is a 522 megawatt equivalent wind farm, which is halfway to a first gigawatt down. Here's what those wind turbines look like in Rhode Island. Of course, for a one gigawatt equivalent wind farm, you'd need 350 of them. Not five, like you see here. How soon can we expect these turbines to be up and running? That all depends on how the negotiation goes and the approval process. If all goes well, they'll be online by 2024. That's five years for a half gigawatt down. All right, Team Wind, here's your challenge. For a first gigawatt down, you need to double the Orsted project. Get 350 wind turbines up and running. In five years? Are you kidding me? You need to expedite that process. Then, just like Team Solar, after your first gigawatt down, how many more can you do? Can you go all the way? Looking at this NREL assessment for offshore wind energy leasing areas, it says here the maximum capacity of the entire area of analysis is between 3,100 and 3,400 megawatts. Here's that area of analysis with the 3,400 megawatt maximum capacity. That's 3,400 megawatts nameplate capacity. With that 47.5% capacity factor, that, that'll give you 1.6 gigawatts. Uh, so that's a first down, almost a second. And of course, we're a 20 gigawatt state, so that does come up short. So the question is, is this the total area available for wind in New Jersey, or is this just a small part they're analyzing here? Either way, we should all know. Uh, anyone who's playing this game, anyone who cares about getting to zero carbon in New Jersey should kind of know what our capacity is offshore and where the turbines are going to go and where the action is going to be. Now, you don't just have solar and wind, you also have nuclear. How is Team Nuclear doing? Not well. In fact, they're going backward. Check it out. Indian Point Nuclear Power Plant is getting shut down. Indian Point has two working reactors, about one gigawatt, that's a thousand megawatts, nameplate capacity each, running at about 80% capacity factor, so 800 megawatt equivalent each. Together, that's 1.6 gigawatt equivalent. Now the first reactor is scheduled to be shut down April 2020, the second April 2021. Basically, Team Doom is getting a first gigawatt down, and New York is getting set back 1.6 gigawatt equivalent. 1.6 gigawatt equivalent. Where have we heard that before? Yes, of course. That's the maximum capacity of that area of analysis for wind. So Indian Point is equal to all this area covered in wind turbines. Who knew? I hope you're starting to see how the first gigawatt down concept really puts things into focus. You've got New York State with a 50 gigawatt field, about 20% decarbonized. So the line of scrimmage is at 10 gigawatts, but they're setting themselves back 1.6 gigawatt. Not only do they not have a coherent plan for getting a first gigawatt down, they don't have a way to replace the 1.6 gigawatt they're going to lose with Indian Point. Okay, fun fact, they plan to replace the energy through fossil fuel colonization of New Jersey. You might be thinking, well, that doesn't seem like much. We could do that. And you can, I believe in you. I'm just not sure you're seeing the bigger picture. Cause then you know you do have to go another 39 gigawatts, right? And of course, just that first little bit is a lot of work. You need 560 offshore wind turbines up and running by April 2021 just to break even on Indian Point, just to stay in the same line of scrimmage that you're already at. And then plus another 350 offshore wind turbines for the first gigawatt down. So that's 910 wind turbines for that little thing. Okay, I love your enthusiasm. I just, okay, reality check here. The world's largest offshore wind farms today, the world's largest one, the Walney, 
is apparently 659 megawatts nameplate capacity. So, you know, multiply that by the capacity factor, it's like 200, 300 megawatts. So you need like four of them for a gigawatt down. And that, that one has a hundred and looks like 189 wind turbines. Okay, the largest wind farm in the world. And you wanna just, you know, plop down 910 wind farms, um, you know, in time to offset Indian Point you probably haven't even thought of offsetting Indian Point. You're like, oh, we'll just we'll just be efficient for like a decade while they get the wind turbines up. Like, what are you thinking? The clock is ticking. The, the planet is on fire. <sighs> what I'm saying is we have a lot of players who are very passionate and they want to save the world, but they don't realize what's involved in getting to zero carbon. We've got a lot of folks who are great at defense, you know, banning things, blocking things. But this game requires offense, getting things up and running, whether they're wind turbines or solar farms or nuclear reactors. These are the decisions that we have to grapple with as we play this game, uh, as we race to zero carbon and save the planet together.